I think this might be top five. Right. Is it top three? Top five, I reckon. Okay. Jordan went out last night. Well, we all went out last night, but some of us went out just a little bit more. (sighs) Okay, let's do this. Hola and welcome to Help I Sexted My Boss, the podcast where we help you navigate the challenges of modern life. Answering your 21st century questions and finding solutions to those everyday dilemmas, like what should you do when you're in Benidorm? And what's the Spanish for I'll have two G&Ds, please? Only two. And what would that be? Um, I think the, in Benidorm language, it's just I'll have two G&Ds, please. And what should you do if you've accidentally sexted your boss? But we're not your usual agony ants. Are we William Hansen, the UK's leading etiquette expert? I didn't know we had all the frigging wags here watching us. <laughs> Sorry, we're, we're recording in our villa in Benidorm and we've got a bit of a... We've got an actual audience here. Yes, well, it's yeah. nice, I like we've it. We've got all, all the wags here, all the wags. Shall we have another woo? Let's have a better woo. Oh, wow. Gosh. It's like TFI Friday. I love it. Uh, no, we're not Jordan North Radio and Television presenter. I'm more Casablanca, you're more Costa Blanca. Very good. That's from Archie Richards. Thank you for that one. OK, um, shall we have Eric Dog? Hair of dog, yes. Are you sure you're okay with this? Yeah. I'll do the debon. No, you do the debon because that makes the noise. Okay. I'll d- allow. George uh, <laughs> <laughs> just pointed at his face to make me talk about these gold slugs that are underneath his. Oh. That's, it's a Spanish one. They put that little plastic thing in. What don't the heck they? is this? So it's, it's just a free pour. Look. To free pour. Well, I can free pour without one of those. Look. It's, there's a there's a thing stuck in the uh, in it's the not, gin. It's meant to be <laughs> lucky <in there>. gin. <laughs> right now. <laughs> Which oh. Oh. I can tell you've got someone next door to you. <laughs> what? I don't know. I'm going to warn you, Gene Davis, this podcast is not going to be funny today. It's not going to be well, any. Well, fifty percent of it won't well, be. Well, you'll be funny, but I won't be. Oh God. Um, oh, there's no slice of lemon, but never mind. Um, we'll toast. Let's toast Benidorm, the town. Is it a town or a city? Just Benidorm. Benidorm for having us. Benidorm, Cheers. thank you so much. Oh, that's delicious. Ah, I'm back, baby. How many? How many drinks did you think you had last night? I'm back. Oh, that's rough. <laughs> that's really rough. <laughs> um. How many drinks did I had? Right, I'm not proud of this, but I stayed up for 24 hours yesterday. Yeah. So um, we got up at 20 past three mm-hmm. for the flight. I'll, I'll be honest, me and William had an argument the night before. <laughs> <laughs> we actually fell out. Um, well, we didn't fight, I just stopped messaging you. Yeah, and you just <laughs> sent one of your fucking passive-aggressive texts. No, me. no, it wasn't passive. It, it was, was just, just aggressive. aggressive. Yes. It was. <laughs> so we fell out the night before. Um, so I got up at 20 past three. And but we're friends again We are now, friends again we? now. Yeah. We love each other. Yeah. And then I got to bed. I remember looking at my phone last night and I got to bed at half past three. So technically I'd been up for 24 hours and 10 minutes. Yeah. That's a lot. It's a, it's a long time, especially with alcohol. Um, we, um, G and D was listening to this podcast will know that uh, famously, Jordan and Ben, to a certain extent, are not morning people. Yeah. And normally when we record at 8.30 in the morning, Jordan is a delight. Well, imagine what Jordan's like at 3.30 in the morning, everybody. At Gatwick Airport, Jordan was a sight to behold. I'll be honest, I don't, I, I don't think... I don't like to swear much on the, on the podcast. Really? I don't, I don't, I don't. No, but you do. I was an absolute twat yesterday, and I can only apologise. What, in the morning? Yeah. I'm sorry. I but don't think you were if, a... If someone wakes up, I said this, if someone wakes up, I've got my hood up, yeah? Yes. And I'm being, like, I'm not being talkative. Don't ask me every 10 minutes if I'm all right. Darling, are you okay? Darling, are you all right? I had you, Mikey, everyone else. Yeah. Bloody, everyone, just leave me alone. Sorry. And you I would... didn't. I didn't know the code of hood up, don't talk to me. If the hood's up, don't talk. I thought it was hood up, give me your money. No. I thought that was the code. No. Christ. But it turns out it's not. It was, um, and I'm... Um, you did not shut up on that plane. I'm sorry. Two hours straight talking about pansexuals. It wasn't two hours straight. I and, no, it bloody wasn't. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Two hours gabbing away. Well, you had your headphones in. You shouldn't have been able to I hear me. I had to me. listen to the same episode of um, Desert Island Discs three times. And it weren't that good. Just Who was on it? Bloody, what's he called? 
Go on. From um, Peep Show. David Mitchell. No, other one. Robert Webb. Yeah. Right. It went not It was all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you listened to it three times, so it must have been Because you were right. doing the editing. Right. Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. Part. I'm being horrible, Anna. Sorry. No. Well, look, we, I'm, if we're flying back together in a few days. I will learn if you are hood up. I will not talk to you. Yeah, hood up. And this morning, when you were a bit delicate, more on that in a minute, I just said to you, I went, hello, lovely to see you. If you need anything, let me know. I'm just going to let you be. I learnt my lesson. Thank you. What time did you get in last night? 11.30. No, you didn't. I think it was, Mikey. Half 11, Mikey. Oh, 11.40. 11.40, George. I wanted to stay out, I did. (laughs) (laughs) We actually met a real-life Mikey yesterday as well, didn't we? (laughs) 11.40, that's like... That's when it properly gets going in, on Benidorm in yes, about midnight. that's why we left. OK, we've a lot to talk about. Um, so, as always, remember, if you need our help with something, then we'd love it if you got in touch. You can send your tales of trepidation to help at sexofmyboss.com or you can tweet us or send us a message on Instagram at sexofmyboss or you can write to William, who in the fullness of time promises a handwritten reply on one of our luxury greeting cards with executive self-seal envelopes. The address is on the website, sexmyboss.com, and William will also invoice for his time writing those letters. <laughs> is that going to keep that on running, joking? Well, mate, I'll stop invoicing. I can't believe you invoice for that. I spend hours replying to the mail. Yeah, but... Hours? Where's that in the contract? I'm not going to go into this now, because okay. we'll go into it after the recording. Let's not talk money. Is but it... I'll stop invoicing then. No, no, no. Because I'm a charity. No. Yeah. I give and I give. <laughs> It doesn't matter. Um, we have had such a big reaction to the dildo <sighs> clip from last Tuesday's episode. Oh, my God. People that don't normally listen or, or consume any sexed on whatever platform have messaged me to uh, say congratulations or to say how funny it was, and it's just so nice to be recognised for highbrow work. When, I, <laughs> when Granny gave me that etiquette book, <laughs> age 12, I think is, this is what she had in mind. So thanks for that, Granny. Yeah, it's, um, it, uh, we didn't expect that response. So basically, uh, Lad Bible shared it. Yeah. It's all over TikTok. It's just being retweeted like every single second on Twitter. We were even on an Australian breakfast show. Which Kylie I, and Jacko. Kyle and Jackio. Kyle and Jackio. <laughs> and nice. Which, let me tell you, is a huge raid, a massive radio show. They thought I was American. <laughs> yes. Here, right, I've got a clip for you now from, uh, from England. One of them's like a posh bloke and the other thinks an American. I'm like, fucking American. Um, yes, they're clearly not very well travelled. No. no. Uh, so, but, yeah, so thank you for sharing that and for name-checking us. Uh, and I've, I've said this, and I think we've all now got to limit expectations. I said this when we had the dad on Grinder and, and the igloo incident, but the, the dildo dilemma we had last week i think we've just got to manage expectations that we are never gonna have a letter like that again well i, I hope not don't think we could they I don't not... think we could top that no on the Aust- <laughs> grow up on the australian program they said that we were a a podcast where people write in with their sex dilemmas just want to make that perfectly clear we're not no we do dinner plates and all yeah. sorts you want to know about your oyster forks you let us know. Yeah, we'll, when, do, well, one of us will do it. I, I, I didn't like that either. We're not a sex. No. When we never, it was never a sex podcast. Podcast. We no. actually help people who've like. I mean, I can't. I mean, that said, all of our disgusting ones involve sex, <laughs> but um, it's not. Sexual. It's not <laughs> What's that? Of? It's not. <laughs> And Sticky Vicky, but we'll come on to that oh, God. in a future episode. Are we talking about that today? No, oh, we'll okay. talk about that right. in another episode. Um, but yeah, look, it's been great. And if you're new to the podcast, um, hi, I'm Jordan. This is William. We're currently in Benidorm. We're not normally in Benidorm. We're not normally in Benidorm. We're drinking gin and de bonnet, which is our signature drink. And um, yeah, we're here with 24 gin divas. Yes, or well, they're somewhere in Benidorm having a nice time. Half my family Yes, and all the wags. Yeah, so. and and we're here thanks to Amazon Music, who have very generously uh, contributed to this trip. Oh God, right. I don't think they will be next year. No, <laughs> Jesus. Um, can I just say I am so sorry <laughs> to Craig and Megan and Candy, Megan and Candy, uh, yep. who've come with us from Amazon. Um, who left Wendy with the Amazon people last <laughs> night? Jesus. So we were out. Um, we were in a gay bar. 
Yes, or just a bar, uh, of, uh, you call it. And my mum, I introduced my mum to Craig and the Amazon lot. And obviously they're from Amazon Podcasts. Yeah. So Craig is like an exec at... He's incredibly senior in managerial. He's incredibly senior in... And to stress, he deals with podcasts. Podcasts. Nothing else. So I went, oh, uh, Mum, this, this is Craig from Amazon. She went, oh, I've ordered some chicken fillets online and they've not turned up and calf's... <laughs> Calf having the same problem. She's ordered an air dryer. Two weeks it's not been now. I think you're really, really letting yourselves down because we're not getting out. And I'm like, Wendy, please leave it. So I went, Mummy don't work for Amazon Amazon. He works for podcasts. Well, no, he does work for Amazon Amazon. Yeah. He works for a different division of Amazon Amazon. She was like, oh, can you get me uh, money off? Do you have a like, staff discount? I'm like, oh, for God's sake. Oh, for God's sake. So my mum were, Wendy were basically having a go at the Amazon lot yes. for her deliveries, which is nothing to do with Amazon podcasts. No. But there we go. Yeah. It was lovely to see them. I think we're seeing them later on at the uh, at the live recording. Do you know what we? she said to me last night? She no. Said them, she, oh, she was loving it. And she went, do you know, all your friends and everyone on podcast, they've all got lovely teeth. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I wondered where that was going. I like, <laughs> she said, all of them have got right nice teeth. Is not like that... me. Not like me and your dad. Oh. She, Look at your dad's teeth. They're horrible. Look at everyone's got right nice teeth. She said, I've noticed. I'm like, ah. right. So that's the one thing. So is she priming you up to do her teeth? Yes. Yes. You've just reminded me. <laughs> I think I agreed to pay for her to get some teeth mm. when my dad retires. Right. Yeah. Anyway, right. Um, Most people get a carriage clock. <laughs> a what? Don't worry. What's um, What's your first impressions of Benidorm? Come on, talk to us. What do you think? Well, it's gorgeous, isn't it? It's it's the <laughs> it's very me. And Mike and I are clearing our diary to come back next year. Yeah, I'll take the slugs. Yeah, do everyone have these slugs under his eyes? What are they meant to do, those they, slugs? They, um, they, for the puffs under your eyes, they to make you less puffy. I answer to William. Thank you. <laughs> they make me less puffy. Do they? <laughs> Let's keep them on for a bit longer. <laughs> 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 That's what they're for. Yes. You nice. should try them. Actually, no. I actually I nicked these off Greg James. You nicked them off Greg James? I was covering for him last week and he's got a load in this little basket in the studio. So I, I took about I took about four or five with me. Gosh. So yeah, anyway, um tell everyone what we've been up to, your first impressions of Benadorm and what we're doing later on today. Well, can I say let's start at when we landed at Alicante Airport. I've got the shakes. <laughs> I've actually got I the need shakes. another G&D. Um, Alicante <laughs> Airport, lovely. You all right? I've got the shakes. Go on. Do we need water? Yeah, Do I'm all right. Yeah, sorry. I'm really, really rough, g and I'm hanging out my arse here. Go on. We landed at Alicante Airport. Lovely. Efficient. Oh, it's Spanish airports are Clean. best. Clean. I mean, it was clean other than a lot of people that went to the men's lavatories did not wash their hands because I watched them. <laughs> Um, but other than that, the yeah, they don't do key. it in Spain. It's very continental. Well, th I d don't think they were Spanish oh. in the men's loos. Okay. Um, yeah, but no, clean, efficient bags turned up. Lovely. It's very, very good impression. Like initially, I was like, oh, this may not be as bad as I was expecting. And then we arrived in Benidorm, uh, and it was fine. But no, it's it's okay. I mean, it's it looks just like Monaco, really, doesn't it? The the cliff tops with all the, the high rise. Although I believe that you're not allowed to do high rise anymore. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, they, they don't they don't give much planning permission to build no. high rises. That's the that's the. Some very interesting. There's like a building. There's like three legs with like a domey thing on the top. Do you know what I mean? Have you seen it? What is that? Where? In Benidorm, Benidorm. Oh, we'll, we'll we'll investigate later. It's very interesting architecture. Okay. Yeah. I think you, Mikey uh, thought it looked a bit like LA. There's a big there's a big Jesus at the top, a big cross. Yes. That's because in the seventies. The Spanish fault. We were all sinners, so they put yeah. that on the top of the cliff. Well, I'm going to come on to this later for my etymology of the week. Oh, right, yes, sorry. I've looked more into Benidorm. Oh, OK. Benidorm was the first place uh, in Spain that they allowed bikini wearing. Did you know that? <laughs> Did they? Yes, because General um, Franco uh, banned bikinis, but then the mayor of Benidorm in the 60s or 70s went to sp get permission from General Franco for ladies to wear bikinis. Um, I went on the strip last night to watch a Burnley game. Yeah, so we had a lovely dinner. Yeah. The whole team assembled for a dinner, and Jordan then peeled off at nine o'clock to go and watch Burnley versus Manchester City. Yep. 
Get you. Yes, and they. How how many goals did Burnley score? We didn't score any. Right. How many goals did Manchester City score? Three. Right. So are you going down? I mean, was it a league game? It was, but it was only the first game of the season, so it's. Oh, fine. It only, oh right. Well, started yeah. you mean to go on? Yeah. So that was nice. Um, um, so I'm glad you left. Really, it's worth going. But I was on. I then went on the strip with my mum and dad. And, and the strip is just the front bit. Yes. Yeah, and I I've not been spending on. For a good couple of years, and I forgot. And last time I come, it was during the pandemic, so it weren't really that busy. Mm. And then I forgot what it's like. Yeah. Yes. Even our Lee, who said I've done tours of Bosnia, Baghdad, <laughs> and Belfast in the Troubles, he were like, "This is this has got to be up there." That's what our Lee said. Wow. <laughs> That's what. Had he Lee... been here before? Um, yeah, he's been a few times. Right. He's, he, Do you it, think it's got worse, Benidorm? Or, or, or it's, no, let's change that. Do you think it's changed? Yeah, it's definitely now Stag and Hindu Central. It used to be. But apparently in September, it's like a bit more, a bit older. But it's definitely Stag to Central. They were like, last night, I actually seen a Mario brother getting off with Nicki Minaj. <laughs> Right. So there was this girl dressed as, I think it was Nicki Minaj. She had a blue wig on. It could have been anyone. Could have been Nicki Minaj. And then there was a Mario brother. And like, he kind of, it was really funny at first because they were necking, but his fake moustache were getting it way, so he ripped it off. And then they were laughing, but started like necking. Nice. And didn't you say you saw a two-year-old just lying on two chairs with a with a de- <laughs> Well, I coat? said, I thought this was really sweet. And you're all like, let's call Spanish social services. I'm like, chill your beans. So I said, it reminded of me going on holiday. They were when the Red Lion, there was like mm. a toddler. They put two chairs together and he was sleeping under his dad's coat. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's what I used to do. At what time? Uh, at half twelve. Right. And you were all like, oh, God, mortified. That child should be in bed. Mm. Really, at that time. But look, um, yeah, it's. It, I forgot what it's like. It really is. It really is great. And we've only been here for a day, so we've not properly been on the strip because you were in the old town last night. So I had to come and meet you. So that was the old town. That was, was the it? old town. Yeah. And everyone kept telling me the old town's nice. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought, well, this can't be it. It was lovely. It was down that Spanish. A uh, big shout out to Jeff. In um, if you come to Benidorm, definitely go to Company Bar. Company. Yeah. yeah. He was doing his, doing his pina coladas. Uh, well, he didn't call them pina coladas. Was that a gay joke? You know, what? Yeah. It's a Stephen Sondheim joke, oh. yes. Uh, very few people. Some people will get that listening to this. Um, Some select homosexuals. <laughs> he called them what? He, uh, penis coladas, I believe. And when, uh, when Mairead ordered one, it came out with a big sort of um, sparkler. We need to talk about Mairead in a second. OK. But, um... <laughs> Uh, She's going to be a special episode all on her own. I think Mairead will be the bonus. Um, but just try and sum up Benidorm so far in, in three words. Your experience of it so far. Don't forget, tonight we're going out properly. Tonight we're going to do the strip and stuff. <laughs> we are. I don't want to break it to you, Jordan. I've said to everyone here, because nobody came on the strip last night, I said, tonight I want you to come on the strip and just experience it, just for an hour, just to see what it's Ben's and the other, other producer, Ben. Proper producer Ben, that's what we should call him. Proper producer? What, Ben, ben Snows? <laughs> yeah, proper producer Ben's <laughs> nodding his head. He's, yeah. Yes. Yes, he is actually on Radio 2 known as producer Ben. Like, listen, yeah. it's so confusing. My mum was speaking yeah. to him last... My mum was speaking to Radio 2 Ben last night, asking yeah. him how Cat was. Right. <laughs> <laughs> she went, I f- I'm confused. Is that not producer Ben? I went, yeah, that's producer Ben from Radio 2, not from Helper Sex and My Boss. Should we talk about the coffee in the villa? That we've done this morning. Really? Because we're going to have later on, we're going to have a coffee off. Can we off. not do more chat about coffee? It's so, right, So on. I brought my scales, I descaled the kettle yesterday. You've not, you've not described Benidorm in three words. I can't find three words. Three words are not enough. Okay. Right. I'll, I'll, I'll work on that. Okay. Yeah. You did descale the, cu- the kettle, which, yes. by the way, a genius thing to do. Tech descaler with you on holiday. Yes. Uh, so that's much better. When I was making my coffee, when you made your coffee, did you use any of the filtered water? Oh, is the filtered water? No, I Well, just from use... the bottles. Oh, no, I just used the tap. OK. Um, well, I used filtered water, and it was much nicer. And I think mine was very smooth, and lots of people did agree. Your coffee... Can I have one of those cans? Oh. Jordan wants a beer. Do you not want any G&D? Uh, I think a beer will sort me out. Oh, don't, please, don't open that near equipment. Now it's rolled. <laughs> no. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yes, and I think your coffee, uh, someone described it as like tar. 
that's exactly how it should be. So, and I think Ben got it from the shop. It's strength number ten, mm. which is like ooh, rocket fuel, blows yes. your head off. So, um, you see, where I buy my coffee, it's not done in strength. Well, this is ten. Usually, I get five. Yeah, I know, but that's in supermarkets. So I poured one. Who was it? I poured it for Cat today, didn't I? Yes. She's... Cat, what did you think? It was strong. <laughs> I can't do an impression while she's here. <laughs> I can't look at her. It blew one's socks off. <laughs> off. I can't do an impression. Man. Stuart, what did you think of the coffee? Oh, I was bloody off my head, I was. Who's caught is that jacket? I've been up for days on that stuff. Who's see those two houses on the L? Mine's the middle. Oh, it was strong, it was. It reminded me of the days in the valleys. <laughs> on Mikey, how was the coffee? Oh, bloody hell, fire. <laughs> Christ. You know I don't like coffee. Well, I like coffee, but coffee don't like me. <laughs> Fruit. I have a needle. I could shit through an hairnet, Jord. Oh, Mikey. Ben, Ben, how was it for you? Hi, guys. It was very, very strong coffee. Yeah. Who's did you prefer, Ben? Yeah, whose did you prefer? Well, oh, did you? <laughs> Mine was literally thick. It was like tar. Yeah, well, that's what I like said. Like what yeah. you tar mac with. That's the best... But anyway, we're, we're looking forward to meeting the g and later. We're yep. going to do the live recording on the strip. Mm -hmm. um, we, the, supposedly, all the g and have been, apparently, it's been lovely. They've all been getting on very well. They've, there's a WhatsApp group. They're all oh, it's uh, great. chatting in. They've been in the pool together. We've, we keep getting shown pictures of them all chilling out on sun lounges, having yeah. drinks together. And, um, that, and we're that looking forward to joining thing. them later. So, yeah, we've been in Benidorm. So far, so good. We've talked about coffee, which is great. Um, before we go on to... William's etiquette etymology of the week and the listeners' questions. I think we just need to briefly mention Maraid. Okay. <laughs> so we talked about Maraid before, and I don't quite think until you actually meet Maraid what she's like. So um, I should have pre warned her. Everyone loves her, but she just said to Stuart before she went, Here, Stuart, I'm really sorry for saying that you and Chris were psychos last night. <laughs> I was like, I was like, Trust me, that is least of your worries. <laughs> um, the Maraid has got the darkest sense of humour that I... She told a, a, a prank that she did on a friend last week that I can't... It's so bad. Are we going to mention it or not? That I can't even mention it. Right. But well, yeah. then that's good content, isn't it? <laughs> so... <laughs> There you can hear a cackling. <laughs> that one makes for good radio. Background, but um, Maraid's been on good form. So I went for lunch with Maraid on Thursday mm. at the time of recording. It's Saturday. And she said, what are you doing this week? I said, I'm going to Benidorm with podcast. And she said, I'm coming. I'm coming. And there and then she booked her flights and uh, she's here. And we're all having a lovely time. We're all having a lovely time in the heat. The, the power tripped in the villa earlier, so the AC went off. Yeah. And there are special AC units for Diva Jordan. <laughs> Who insisted? I mean, I didn't insist. Yes, you did. I didn't. Yes, you did. I got told. Okay. Ed pecked about bloody aircon for two weeks anyway. Right. Right, should we go on to William's Etiquette Etymology of the Week? Yes. All right, so this week I thought I would, uh, being in Spain, we talk about why is Benidorm called Benidorm? Because mm -hmm. there's a bit of confusion as to why it is called Benidorm. A lot of people think that Benidorm means the city that never sleeps. But after these messages, I'll tell you exactly why Benidorm is called Benidorm. All right, Gene Divas, uh, thanks very much for sticking with us. Uh, before we go to the listeners' problems and questions, it's time for William Hansen's Etiquette Etymology of the Week. Why is Benidorm called Benidorm? Well, as I said just before those messages, it's not, uh, it doesn't mean sleep well, which a lot of people think it comes from Dorma Bene, meaning sleep well. It does not. The origins of the name are much later uh, and date to an era when this part of Spain was under Moorish rule. So rather than Latin, the Benidorm's... Rather than from Latin, Benidorm's name is actually from Arabic. It is believed to be a corruption of Bin al-Durum, meaning sons of the monastery, because this was the place where the monks lived. So that's what Benidorm means. I've heard that before. Something to do with monks. <laughs> no, I have. My grandma's told me that. Grandma Glennis? Yeah. Who was She's on... a character. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> well, she was on good form last night. She was on, yes. She could barely... I only saw her during the day. <laughs> she could barely see straight, never mind talk. Yes, she, the... she definitely didn't see straight here. But she, uh, we, when I met her during the day, she said, 
I was one of the only people that I'm allowed to call her grandma. Yes, she don't yeah. like being called, she don't like being called grandma. No. So pe- everyone calls her Peep, she don't like it because she makes it sound makes it sound old. Yeah. So, and she's not old really. She's not old no. for grandma, no, she's not. Um, 48. <laughs> Jindy? Yes, please. Uh, uh, but yeah, she, my grandma's told me that it's something to do with monks. But yeah, yeah she's on fine form. She's with she's here with a boyfriend. Nigel. Nigel. Who's a character. <laughs> <laughs> They're all characters. That's why you've you you come from a long line of characters. I think the most sensible one is our Lee and niece. Really? Yeah, and that's saying summer. Okay. Did you meet when the other Wendy and Richard? No. I've only met Bill and Michelle. Oh, Bill and Michelle. They're characters. <laughs> they are characters. Maraid and Michelle was nearly a thing last night. <laughs> <laughs> I was very worried. At one point, Maraid and Michelle were getting on so well, Bill asked if he could watch. Right. <laughs> Good. And when they said no, he said, will you at least send pictures? <laughs> and at that point, I thought, it's time to go on. Yeah. Anyway. It says in the script here, weekly plug, and then it's got X. Now, I don't know if you want us to plug the new Twitter or you just haven't been bothered to actually This G and Divas is William's passive aggressiveness to a T, (laughs) what you're witnessing right now. Shall we go on to the listeners? Let's go on to them. What have we got? Uh, This one starts, love beautifully, to the stunning Jordan and wonderful William. Stunning. Wrong way around, but nice. I don't feel stunning. No. Uh, I'm this in... could be top five. Yes, That's, good. It's at the time of recording, it's uh, 17 minutes past one, so... 17 if... minutes past two, you it's... just haven't updated. Oh, is, oh, is it? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if, if this doesn't shift, because usually I can shift an hangover, but this is lingering. Okay. Hello, Sheffield. <laughs> Hello, Sheffield. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, I'm in a bit of a quandary. I nipped over to my parents, no apostrophe, to feed the dog as they were away on holiday. While dining, so I had a quick look at Grinder. Oh, sorry. While doing so, I had a quick look at Grinder. Being in a different area, I thought I'd see what was on offer. To my surprise, there was an extremely hot guy I hadn't seen before. So I sent a message. Very quickly, it had been arranged for him to come over to my parents' wow. apostrophe house. He arrived and we stripped each other off and eventually made it to my old bedroom by numerous rooms and a variety of positions. We had quite a lengthy session and literally just as he... Come on! Did he? I can't read that. Just as he shot his heavy load up my back, I heard the front door go. Jesus wept. To my horror, I realised it was my parents, back from holiday. I soon realised I'd got their return date wrong. In a blind panic, I pulled on my shorts and he got fully dressed. I calmly went downstairs and greeted my parents and gave the excuse I'd felt a little sleepy and had had half an hour on my bed while walking the dog. Successfully distracting my parents while my grinder meat quietly slipped out the back door for the second time. <laughs> My parents were happy to see me. It was a stunning day, so we sat outside for an hour having a G&T and chatted about their holiday. My mum got up to... Sh- My mum got up to get us all another drink, and when she returned, she made a comment about how I should be careful sitting in the sun without lotion on. I was still sat in only my shorts due to having run down to distract them. My mum quickly proceeded to grab some lotion and squirted it on my back. Oh. Instantly, and to my horror, the squirting lotion on my back reminded me I still had my grinder meats... Oh, I can't do this. <laughs> there is a limit. God. Instantly, and to my horror, no. the squirting lotion on my back reminded me I still had my grinder meat's full load upon it, drying oh, in the sun. God. <laughs> drying in the sun. My mum proceeded to tell me how my back was peeling and rubbed in the sun <laughs> lotion. <laughs> oh, no. Obviously, we don't always do sex ones. Obviously, my back wasn't peeling. It was my grinder meats, no apostrophe, dried, flaky spunk. <laughs> my mum... I'm in- sorry, but spunk is such a great word, isn't it? Oh, lovely. Spunk. Yeah. <laughs> it's up there. Oh, it's my it's mum spunk in- or spaff. <laughs> sorry, I'm, being- I'm showing off in front of everyone, sorry. <laughs> My mum enthusiastically rubbed in the lotion and it was almost like I heard the penny drop as she realised it wasn't dried skin. My mum went into the kitchen, washed her hands and necked her gin. In turn, I necked mine, made my excuses and swiftly left by the front door. I'm very versatile. (laughs) I don't think so. It's clear she realised what it was. Should I say something? It's rather awkward. How I wish I... Oh, Jesus Christ! I think you're gonna... You're one letter away from a nervous breakdown. (laughs) How I wish I had swallowed. Thank you in advance, Chris. 
<laughs> yeah. I wouldn't say anything. This is a classic case of you just sweep it under the carpet and don't say anything. Yeah, we've said this before. This is this is for your therapist. Um, yeah. I wouldn't bring it up because, do you know what? She probably wouldn't want you to know that she's clicked on. So just don't bring it up. Don't mention it. Don't mention it. Yeah. Has anything like that happened to you? God, no. No. Has anything like that happened to you? No. God, no. Have you seen something about Mary? No, I haven't, but I've seen the Steps song that uh, does uh, the video for whatever. The, what's the song? Say You'll Be Mine. Say You'll Be Mine. Thank you, Mikey. Uh, that alludes to that. And there's, he gets he yeah. spunk in his head. Yeah. It's really funny. This next one, and let's crash on, is from Holly. This is short. Dear Jordan and William, picture... Oh, for God's sake. Picture this. You and your partner in bed at night, lying in post-orgasm bliss, having finished sex just seconds before. My question is, how long is the appropriate time to wait before putting on an eye mask for sleeping? All the best, Holly. They're genuinely not all about sex. Yeah, um, it's one of those where you've, you could say 10 minutes, but you've got to judge the, judge the moment. It's, it's one of those where it's, yeah... Because mm. it is, it's like quite blissful afterwards. I'm not making, <laughs> I'm avoiding eye contact here. <laughs> Should we talk about the text you've been sending me all week after a certain video? What text? That start, I'm not. Oh, God, no. no. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, it, so you've kind of got to judge it in the moment, but give it a good, give it a good 10 minutes. Yeah, because you don't want to ruin that moment. That moment's special. What would you say? But judge it but judge it by your own. Yeah, 15, 20. That's too long. Is it? Yeah, that's too long. But it's meant if it's like, it, it, they... Um, you don't want to kill the mood. Oh, it's your partner, so, you know, I think it changes. Yeah. It? You're a bit more sort of transactional. Next one. Fingers crossed this is not about sex. To Jordan, William and Ben, I may burn in hell for sharing this holiday nightmare story, but if William is willing to go to Benidorm, dot, 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 I'm an avid supporter of solo holidays. I love my time alone. Mm. I want to try that. We bumped into <laughs> that drag queen from Cardiff <laughs> that my grandma brought last night. He I was wasn't on a here. So he was on a solo. What was his, her, their name? Uh, he was, I think, he was called Mark, and he was from Cardiff on his own. He ended up coming along with us. Did he? Yeah, Lovely. anyway, sorry, carry on, sorry. Uh, I love my alone time meeting new people and being selfish for a few days, but as my friends have pointed out, it's important to share holiday memories together, so as an empathetic person, I agree every so often to go away in a group. However, there is only one person who I love dearly, but honestly, a little part of me dies inside when she suggests a holiday. Now, I'm not prejudiced against dietary requirements and personal choices, but imagine going on a beach holiday with someone who is anti-alcohol and then judges you for drinking at noon at an all-inclusive resort, as well as being a strict vegetarian and makes wretches and makes retching noises when you scoff down some chicken. Oh. Apart from the vegetarian bit, this is pretty much you with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and they are very vocal that frivolous flirting and holiday romancing is slagging. Oh, Christ. The last beach holiday with this friend culminating in her getting a very bad sunburn, so she went back to the room to cool down. I, however, ran to the bar, ordered a massive cocktail. I received a wonderful life lesson from the barman. There are friends for life, and then there are friends you go on holiday with. You are with a very boring person. Choose wisely next time. So my question is, how do I broach the subject of never, never going on holiday with her again? From Deb. It sounds like you're on holiday with Mother Teresa. Bloody hell. <laughs> um, I think, yes, you just have to say to her, look, I think we have different expectations yeah. for a holiday. Um, let's do something different. Yeah. Or actually, I'm going to do X. Just say exactly that. Look, we, we, we're two different people. When it comes to holiday, it sounds like that old ITV program, Holiday Showdown. Yes. Where this is basically an episode of Holiday this Showdown. This is basically an episode of Holiday Showdown, which is basically on. It's on now, and it's called what's it called? Which holiday? Which holiday? Poor holiday. Oh, I don't know. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I watched one episode the other week. One was in a caravan, in I think it was Skegness, and the other was in Marrakesh. Nice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think you've just got to be honest because holidays... Yeah, just communicate. Holidays are so important. You look forward to them all year. You work hard all year round. You don't want to go on holiday with someone that's judging you because you're having a cocktail or a chicken butty. You've got some holidays coming out, haven't you? Have I? Yeah. November. Yeah, going away to Skegness. Skegness again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is good. You're such a knob. <laughs> what? I'm going to... You loved Skegness so much uh, last year. You're going again. Yeah, I'm going again in November. 
Yeah. I work hard. I might go to Barbados, actually. Oh, what? mm. oh, what's it like there? I don't know. Have you been before? <laughs> Very similar to Skegness, I Is think. Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, dear William Jordan, E.P. Benidorm and Diego. My grandparents own a property in Spain near Benidorm. Where is Diego? They've left me again, Jules. They've abandoned me. They're away all the time. I'm like an orphan. Back when COVID was at its peak and there was a massive restrictions on travel, we weren't able to visit for over two years. When my parents finally returned to Spain, they opened the door to the apartment only to be greeted by a gut-wrenching smell. It turns out that both fridges and freezers had sadly passed away and judging by the smell, they had done so closer to March 2020. They opened the fridge to dispose of some obviously perished food to discover half, oh wow, half the cockroaches on the Costa Blanca uh, had somehow taken up residence, gorging on the rotting food in oh, the deceased fridges. That's horrific. The cockroaches proceeded to flood the kitchen and it took three days to rid the apartment of them. My question to you is this, what should you do? Attack the cretins with bug spray till they'd all perish or check into the local Savoy-esque establishment, where is that, uh, and sell the apartment or all of the above? Thanks, Anonymous. Why is that Anonymous? Call the pest control. Call pest control for that. That it sounds horrific. Yeah. That sounds absolutely... Pest control. And I would check into the hotel, get the pest controllers in, and go back afterwards. You're, yeah, you're, you're not meant to stand on cockroaches as well, because it breeds. So remember this, because you get them in ten. You get cockroaches are rife in Tenerife. Okay. Benidorm's just full of lizards, literally, and <laughs> co cockroaches are in Tenerife are rife. So if you stand on them, because yeah. they're eggs, they go on your shoe, and then you trample them in the hotel and on your bed and stuff. So you should never stand on. I don't know if that's a myth or not. Well, right in, and Divas, if you know. I don't know if I would freak at a cockroach. I mean, I wouldn't love it. So I'm not going to sort of make it a pet, but I'm. It wouldn't. It wouldn't freak me like other vermin. Let me. I'll never forget in the castle. Oh. I did that. Um, Here we go. <laughs> Sorry. So right when you mentioned bloody etiquette. <laughs> I mean, that's my job. Yeah, <laughs> mine is. That's my job. What the castle? Well, when I was on, what was the challenge called? I had to go through the tunnel. Um, trap door. Trap door. And they just basically threw everything on me. And there was cockroaches. And I'll never forget, I was in bed. And um, I'd two, two days after that, I had my turn up on my trousers. And I opened my trousers and there were two cockroaches in there. <gasps> it was horrific. And then I looked and there was one at the end of my bed. It was horrible. Anyway. That's, that's vile. Um, but yeah, no, I would, I would, in answer to Anonymous's question, oh, I would... Check or well, check into the Savoy esque establishment and uh, get a pest controller in. I am rough as arseholes. Do you have time for one more? Yeah, let's do one more. Okay, this is also from Anonymous. I am too old for this, William. I know you are. Dear William Jordan and EPB, I work in quite a fancy hotel where customers can enjoy a range of things, including room service. Room service is often most popular in the mornings and usually is nothing more than a gentle knock on the door followed by the call of room service. The customers come to the door, take the food, and say thank you. Ah, oh, you see, it's not that fancy if the customers take the food from you, Anonymous. You have to come in and set up the table. I don't them. like that in hotels. Why? I'd, I'd rather they didn't come in. I think it's weird because you know what's like in hotel rooms? You've got like boxes on the floor and. Well, no. Hookers in the bathroom and. <laughs> the hook on the back of the door. <laughs> yeah, yeah hook yes. on the back, that kind of thing. Anyway, sometimes the customers will ask you to bring the food into the room. Yes, after they have opened That's the door. That's really tickled, Daryl, that one. <laughs> <laughs> on. For the most part, I have no issues during doing room service. However, on one occasion, not too long ago, we had a room service order that was very large. Two full English breakfasts, more on that in our next episode, pastries, cereals, coffees and juices. We knew this room only had two people staying in it and thought perhaps they'd had a bit of a heavy night before and wanted to make themselves feel better. I carry up this enormous tray of food and do my usual knock on the door, room service, but instead of the door being opened, I hear within the room someone say, just bring it in. While this is not common, it does happen. As I was holding a large tray, I had to balance it in a way that meant I could continue to look at the tray while I opened the door to ensure nothing fell. This meant whenever I turned my head and walked into the room, I was greeted with sounds of grunts and heavy breathing and a sight I don't think I'll ever be able to remove from my memory. I'm... If you're not sure what I witnessed, let's just say the courting couple were quite aggressively appreciating one another's bodies. Fair to say I left the breakfast at the nearest clear space and swiftly left the room. They should see Cat's face. Look at Cat's face. Were they... <laughs> <laughs> Look at... Cat. Really? That's the least shocking letter we've had 
in about five years. Yes, Cat doesn't listen to the podcast. Clearly, <laughs> clearly. Her facial expressions now are quite telling. Is this what this is about? And they, well, so they were, kept, they were shagging. Yeah, where do you wow. want me to put the sausage? Okay. So I was wondering, what is the correct etiquette when delivering breakfast to people who are banging each other into another dimension? Thank you for always brightening my week. Anonymous. Well, how would you how would you do it if you was the bellboy? Um, or girl, or person. Well, it's high. Can I first of all say it's highly inappropriate for the couple that were going at it to allow someone else into the room that is doing their job. I think that's unprofessional. But if that happened, you just again you just put it down, move on. But then, but also like you normally have to like get them to sign the oh, thing. Oh, no. so so to give a tip. I mean, he was giving his tip, but to give another tip. There's there's a few options you could do here. You shall we role play this? <laughs> Okay, yeah, sure. Why Who not? am I? You be the bellboy. You be I'll the be bell the bellboy. Yeah. No, you be the bellboy, because you've got different options. You be the bellboy. I'll be going at it. Okay, right. <laughs> Come on, then. Go on, then. Oh, yes. More. <laughs> now, yes. Kay. Go for it. I think Mikey's got a semi on over there. <laughs> Thankfully, he's not listening. Yes. <laughs> Nothing. I hope you aren't with those trunks on. Put and it in there, Sean. <laughs> OK, now you come in. Uh, <coughs> uh, excuse me, hi. Oh, no. Hi. Um, Faster. Uh, I've got your breakfast here. Just, oh. Just need you to sign this, is that OK? <laughs> Thanks, sir. Now, is it hard-boiled? It, it certainly is. How do you like your eggs? Fertilised? <laughs> um, oh! Did you like that one? That's a good joke. Um, Fine. Uh, oh, I should have said, I f <laughs> sorry, I thought you wanted your eggs soft. Not for, anyway, um, hi, uh, can you just sign this? I, I'm. Yeah, I'm a bit busy. Okay. Can. Um, just add on five euros. Okay, great. Um, can I. Can I join in? Oh. <laughs> Room for one more? Dave, what do you think? <laughs> oh, no. Dave. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's funny in my head. Um, yeah, okay, well, I will... Can and, I join in? Yeah, uh, yeah, fine. Or, or, or if you don't want to join in, can I just sit in the chair in the corner and watch? All right, Bill. <laughs> Bill. Oh, God. Right. <laughs> I think we've helped you there, haven't I we? I think we've... Yeah. I, it's unfortunate that... I mean, the etiquette here, the only etiquette I can think of is... And this is top tip for anyone working in the service industry. If you're delivering... Forget the sex bit, but if you're delivering a tray, and if it's a man delivering a tray to a woman in bed or a female client... You don't face them to put the tray down. You actually go to the bed, turn around to face, let's say, the television, so your back is to the headboard, and you put the tray down sideways so you're not looking down the TV. That's cleavage. so weird. Here you are. Here's you. That's so weird. That's how we would train the hotel staff. Oh, OK. Yeah. Right. But if it's same sex, you can look straight okay, ahead. Yeah. That's right. what we'd say. Uh, right, so this is it. We're, we're in Benidorm. We're off to do our show tonight at Why Not Bar, and we're going out on oh, the... Oh, is that where we're going? Yeah. No one's told me. Oh, yeah, and then we're going out on the strip afterwards. It's called the Why Not Bar. Is it Why Not? Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, why okay. not? Um, oh, Christ alive, I am rough. I need Maybe to... you should have a sleep. Mm, I think I might have a dip in the pool. Oh, yes, I might get in the pool. Yeah, we'll all get in the pool. We'll all get in the pool. Pool party. Pool party, yeah. I've got a lovely breaststroke. <laughs> I really don't get that. Stroke. There'll be no stroking or heavy petting in the pool, please. OK, heavy petting. Chance will be a fat thing. We're all in our 30s. Look, that's never going to happen. <laughs> As always, remember, you can listen every Tuesday and Friday. You can watch us on YouTube on mm. Mondays and share us on your socials all week. You can send you tales of trepidation. We don't stress this enough. Your stories, problems and dilemmas make the podcast so... Send them into help at sextedmyboss.com or you can tweet us or send us a message on Instagram at sextedmyboss. And remember, you can write to William Hansen, who in the fullness of time promises a handwritten reply on one of our luxury greeting cards with executive self-seal envelopes. The address is on the website, sextedmyboss.com. We'll see you on Friday for a bonus. Goodbye. Let's get pissed in Benidorm. Woo! Woo!